Hey everybody, it's Tristan and Nick here. We're gonna talk about the real estate market, the coronavirus, and how to navigate through this whole process. Uh, what do you think, Nick? You ready for this? Yeah, man, I, I am ready. I just wanna give people a couple minutes to jump on and I also want to, oh, I also wanna share it into a couple groups. So should we Perfect. just do that real fast? Then let's, let's, uh, let's get talking about this. I wanna start it off and really get into this and say, we've got to, we've got to guard our minds and we've got to really work on who and what we're listening to. Uh, over the span of the last 24 hours, Nick and I have been, have been engaged with the leaders of our industry and, and some amazing people, authors uh, like Michael Gerber, Bob Berg, and, and just people that, that are actually doing something about this current situation. And the thing that stands out is that these people are also surrounding themselves with people that not only are positive, because and Nick, how often do you hear, oh, just be positive? Not just that, but they're actually taking real steps that we're gonna go over with you to make a difference, right? And that's that's been the key, because I, I hate hearing, Nick, don't you hate hearing, oh, you got a 10X, you got to hustle now. I'm like, uh, well, I mean, mean? yes, I, I, I can't stand that, but I'll give, obviously going to give my two cents as soon as you give your two cents. Yeah. Well, here it is. I'm just going to get to the point. It's, it's, let's start off with mindset. Every great book out there, every great author, every leader always mentions that we need to surround ourselves with the most amazing people out there. People that are going to be able to lift us up and people that are able to give us the truth not not sugar-coated, but to give us actual things that we need to do in a way that sees a solution, not the problem, right? And so with that, let's get started, man, because I know you wrote a great post just a few hours ago. Maybe it was late yesterday. It was yesterday. It was yes, sorry. It was no, yesterday, no, no, no. and I and I posted it um, in a couple different groups. I posted it in the lab coats, obviously. I posted it in our command group. And, you know, basically what I wanted to get through to everybody was this is a time where, listen, regardless of your, of your, of your thoughts and your beliefs, you know, where you stand in terms of politics or, you know, um, what you think in terms of whatever uh, your beliefs are in general, right? This, this has nothing to do with that in the sense that we have to have a much higher uh, we hear this all the time. We got to have a higher EQ, right? An emotional intelligence. We we can't just we can't just make our clients and our and our customers and our friends and family feel stupid because they're actually concerned about something that you know could potentially could potentially be very impactful on the entire world, right? I mean, who's to say that? Who's to say that, uh, you know, listen, 1918, there was a horrible flu influenza that wiped out 50 to 100 million people. I mean, we had, we had polio, we had, we had, uh, um, uh, we had, oh, what was I going to say? The plague, obviously, right? So am I comparing this to that? No, I'm not trying to sound all crazy, right? But what I'm saying is, I think what's, what's bothersome and troublesome is that agents are going through this thinking that it's business as usual. And so you can't say that with 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 a with a with a with a mind that is fully there while you look around you, right? Like let's take for instance the t the town the, the county I live in, right? Uh, they are now mandating that all schools are closed until April fifth, maybe, right? And if they go past April fifth, then they're gonna then they're gonna give us curriculum to teach at home. Um, restaurants and bars and stores in our area are now uh, having to cut their, their um, like restaurants can only uh, hold 50% of their occupancy at this point, right? Um, the, the town I'm from, Montclair, New Jersey, they're closing parks, they're closing restaurants, they're closing all township buildings. Um, Boston is closing bars and restaurants. New York City is doing the same thing. California, I'm sure, is doing some of it, right? I know Washington State has the highest death rate in our country uh, so far. So when you're out there telling people that it's business as usual, that's 
That is not true. It's just not, it can't be true. You as an agent can't be business as usual when businesses around you are not business as usual. So we have to take into account that what is going on around you is not pretend. Regardless of whether or not you think this is as serious as it is, business around you is not as usual. So you need to wrap your head around that. Yeah, that's very true. That's not the post I made, but I'll talk about the post I made. Well, dude, time. you kind of you kind of were you're like a huge downer. Let me let me bring everybody up. Now. No, 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 no. I'm joking. Like, I'm, I'm but, joking. No, I'm joking. No, hold on. Let me just say. Let me just say. But having gotten into real estate in 2007, I got into real estate at a time when it wasn't business as usual, but it was business as usual for me. So I learned to do real estate in the worst market that I've ever known, right? So now we have to do that again. We have to, we have to not pretend it's 2008, but now we have to shift our model. We have to shift the way we lead generate. So I firmly believe that. Well, look, here, here are, here's some facts. I was on the phone with Peter Hernandez. He, he leads Douglas Elliman. He's the president of Douglas Elliman for the Western region. And he and I were going over recession. And, and I was talking to Howard Tager, the CEO of Ylopo2. And he said, looks like we're going to get into a recession. A recession is when we have the GDP go down for two quarters in a row. And we don't know how long this is going to last. It could last a month. It could last two months. It could last until the end of the year. Uh, we don't know because it's unprecedented territory. And the things that we do know are that we need to shift. We need to shift as an industry. And we have some things that we need to do as agents. We need to specifically, what we're going to go over, we need to do these things. And it's not going to be as easy as last month to get a client. It's going to be a lot tougher, right? Instead of contacting 20 people, it's going to take maybe 50, maybe 55 or 60. But the point is that Things are changing. We're going to go into a whole new virtual world. You're seeing the stock for Zoom go up dramatically, which is one great thing that we can use here. So let's get into it, Nick. When yeah. we're having open houses, because now I'm seeing that people, yeah. uh, even the government's saying, hey, don't, don't, don't do this. So let's say we go one route and say no open houses, no actual open houses with yeah. people sitting them. What do we do? How do we hold an open house then? Well, so this is kind of what I talked about yesterday when I made this post uh, earlier about just kind of like how we should start um, understanding the way people are feeling, whether or not you feel the same way. And so some of the suggestions that I had, and I had some agents reach out to me and from different parts of the country, like, Nick, I saw your, I saw your post and, you know, I had took a new listing. What should I do with open houses? Honestly, here's the thing. If it were me, I just wouldn't do it, right? But I would also have a conversation with my seller because here's the thing. If you are using the coronavirus as an objection handler, like I saw someone post like, hey, what should I use uh, when somebody says to me, and that's why I want to wait to list, what's the objection handle? There's no objection handler in the sense that if this is a concern for them, then that's just what you have to deal with because you have to understand the liability behind that. If you kind of like try to talk them in, to doing something they don't want to do around a national crisis um, and someone walks into their home and that person's infected and then your seller gets sick that's a liability for you so so the way i look at it is talk to your sellers about it listen if they you can talk to them about the pros and cons and so with open houses personally i wouldn't do it but secondly what i would do is because in new, in northern new jersey where i used to sell i mean our open house is 50 60 70 people over the course of two three hours it's a lot of people in one house so a couple things, pace, pace, pace the amount of people that come in at one given time, right? If it's a group of two or three, so they can keep, you know, their social distance um, or just don't hold them at all. What I would also suggest is if you're going to be listing homes and another buyer agent calls you uh, and their buyer wants to, to see that house, what I would say is be more purposeful with who you approve showings with. Like, listen, we're only allowing buyers uh, in the home with their agents if we see their pre-approval. So please send me the pre-approval and I will send you the lockbox code or give you uh, access to the home because less is more at this point, less people in the home, but more motivated and able to buy people. That's the way we need to go. It's not about how many people can we get in. You know what I mean? That's true, man. What you're talking about there. So uh, when I was in law school, you just, you just uh, 
reminded me of something. It's called duty of care. And it's, oh, yeah. uh, it's a legal responsibility of a person or, or organization to avoid any like behaviors that could reasonably uh, be harmful to somebody else. And so this is exactly that situation. It's us as real estate agents have this duty to our clients to watch over them, not only their health, right, but financially. And then we have that duty to our families and to the industry. And I think that's part of what we're missing is this duty that some of us understand truly and, and some of us don't. And I think that's, that's why it's necessary to have this conversation because you're right, dude, some people are oblivious to it. It's like, okay, but what about the health ramifications of this, right? Some right. people are actually freaking scared of this. And others. Yeah, and we gotta be serious. We gotta be understanding. No, you're right you know, on, man. Tristan, one of the reasons, you know, one of the, I mean, one of the reasons we didn't have LCA one is because, you know, we we wanted to make sure that people were healthy. We 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 didn't want to have um, the worry that someone was going to get sick at our events, right? Because that would make us feel just terrible for not making the right decision. Exactly. You know? That's that's the point. And here. We're, we're in a situation where um, this is where, where Nick and I spoke to um, the, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, too. So we reached out to everybody. And uh, Chris was telling us that right now, so right now we have the ability to set ourselves apart from so many different industries to be able to say, look, we, we care for you, our clients, and we're here to help you, right? We understand we need to take certain measures to keep you safe in real estate. And here's what we're doing about it, right? So people can then see you as a professional and then we can distance ourselves from used car salesmen, right? Because they're kind of at the very bottom, nothing against them, but they're at the bottom of that <laughs> trusting. And so right now we can actually use this to help us separate from, from other organizations or, or even professions that aren't seen to be as great, right? Because there are some agents out there who, if people pass away from this, you know some agents are gonna pick up the phone and be like, hey, uh, I know your family member died from the coronavirus, can I help sell your home, right? And how is oh. that gonna make us look? Dude, dude, right. dude, dude. Yeah, somebody just commented, Christopher Ozar, Hoboken, oh, he's in Hoboken. Yeah, I, Christopher Hoboken, New Jersey, I know for a fact, yeah, he said Hoboken is shut down. I know for a fact that people in Hoboken, are freaking out, freaking out. So we have to just be really, we have to just be really uh, aware of, of how people are feeling and we don't want to be that salesy, that salesy person. Hey, Tristan, something I was talking about earlier with you was, you know, what should we do with our lead generation, right? So it's like you and I, we, we, we lead generate on Facebook, but you know, we also have a good sphere of influence. So I'm starting to think, do we pull back on the on the Facebook Legion? Do we go a different approach and we focus more on our sphere of influence of people that we know yeah. um, and that we trust? Or, or if you're going to continue to lead gen on Facebook, you know what what kind what kind of approach do you take? Because you don't want to just meet with strangers and, and not know anything about them, right? Well, I think here's what you do: you outline, you take a look at your expenses right now, and you look to see where you can cut back things that you're not using right now, things that are not adding to your bottom line over the last few months, and then you look at your strengths. You look at your strength and you see where. Where have most of my transactions come from in the last few months? And then what you do is you pay attention to that and even add some more money into it. Because right now, like I said, it's going to take more to get the same results, right? And dude, everybody's staying home. So you know the online searches are going to double, if not you. triple, over yeah. the next few weeks. What does that tell you about being online, having a brand that you can connect with your the consumer with online, right? Yeah, I would say, you know, um, obviously you don't want to invest in things that you can't afford, but I would say that, you know, there's most definitely going to be a decline in physical showings and there's going to be more of a need for 
virtual showing. So maybe you know you want to invest in in that Matterport technology where someone could walk virtually through the home, or maybe you want to invest in you know a nice camera where you can go and you can either hire someone to film the house or go film it yourself or do some FaceTime you know with a potential client. I mean, I bought my house in Michigan sight unseen, and that's because I had no choice. But people might need or want to move. And that will be really the only opportunity they have to see a property. So you might need to rethink your marketing efforts in that sense. What do you think? Yeah, I think you're right on, man. Or just get your phone and, and jump on it and use it and do the tour. Here are some things. Here's where Lab Code Agents comes, comes in, though, Nick. Because you and I have created this community to help people uh, grow. And it's all been for free. And we're not going to change that, right? But here, And now it's going to cost you 100 No, I'm kidding. <laughs> But here's where you need to stay close to lab code agents. Here's where you need to come and visit on a daily basis because we're going to keep on educating you. We're going to do webinars with people that are doing great in this market. We're going to be doing online events like the one we just did on Friday. We're going to be interviewing agents that are succeeding. And we're going to be showing you the tools that work in this world, right? Because things are changing over the next few weeks or months. And yeah. we're on it. We're on it for you, right? And so I need you to come back to us and rely on us because this is what Nick and I do all day. Tristan, I need you. Nick. Too. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so listen, listen. Uh, so what I just, I, th I think I just want to say like, you know, I think I just want to say like, listen, as agents, we're, we're, we have chosen a very emotional job in the sense of like very emotional career. I don't like to say job in the sense of like, we deal with people on lots of different levels. Like we deal with people on financial levels, but I feel like it's more important that we deal with people on emotional levels and we have to emotionally understand, even if we think someone might be irrational, we have to emotionally understand how they might be thinking. Right? So would you rather, uh, attempt to talk someone out of their fear and put them into a situation that they aren't hundred percent on, or would you rather be understanding of that person and, 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 and realize that what they're feeling, because listen, the way anyone feels is it's not wrong because if someone feels a certain way, it's the way they are. It's the way they feel. And there's no, there's no wrong. It's, there's not, it's not wrong to them. And that shouldn't, shouldn't be wrong to you. So, so if someone has children, if someone has a, an older relative, a grandmother or a mother-in-law lives with them, you know, something along those lines, because we know that the coronavirus can affect elderly people more, like don't try to talk them into it, right? Just understand where they're coming from and be there with them. Because I would rather that person buy in a year when they're ready and be that agent that, that understood their concern, as opposed to that agent that tried to like use it as an objection Hitler. This isn't a time to do that. Um, for those of you who were went through the downturn like Tristan and I, yeah, it sucked, right? But you know what, like we made it through and now we're stronger for it and we're gonna make it through this. You just have to give it time and we just have to shift and rethink our approach. Yeah, and I think part of that approach is if you're, if you're gonna do a showing, right? And you know that the property's occupied, think ahead and, and call up the, the owners and the agent and say, hey, can you do me a favor and turn on all the lights and leave the doors open, right? And, and also bring some sanitizer with you. Or well, don't leave the doors open, maybe the windows though. Well, you know, the, the doors inside, darn it. Not the, not the doors from the outside. But this way people don't have to open up the cabinets or the drawers, they're already open. So, so little things like that are things that we're gonna have to start thinking about and seeing thinking ahead man and that that yeah, also a long way yeah i mean i've seen people a couple people online were saying yeah i'm you know i'm doing open houses but i'm being very cautious and i'm i, I got i got clorox wipes and i'm wiping down uh i'm wiping down doorknobs and i'm like dude i'm like that is that is customer that is red carpet customer service right there like if you have a seller that is worried right you know you say listen you know if you don't want to do an open house that's okay I, I have, I have all the disinfectants, you know, like, but I understand. And so if they decide to do it, you know, be that agent that goes above and beyond, be that agent that, that understands their concern, because listen, it's, it's a real concern. I mean, is it hitting America the way it's hitting Italy or, or other countries? I mean, we really don't know, but 
But I mean, there are people dying all, all over the world from this virus. So it is serious to a lot of people, especially if they have relatives in other countries, you know, that are, that are in China or in Italy. I mean, it's a real thing to them. So don't downplay the way they're feeling yeah. and, and just be there for them and understand their concern. I mean, that's really what I, because some of the stuff I'm seeing online is, is very uh, unsettling to me. Like is, we're, is. we're supposed to be at a higher regard. Like we compare ourselves to doctors and attorneys more than anything. And so start acting like that. Cause those are people that care for their clients and want the best for them. So start being that person. I agree. And one, one silver lining here so that people understand that, okay, well, look, we're going to head into a recession, uh, but you've got to understand that this is a little bit different. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with our economy right now. And the unemployment rate before this was, was really good. So what's going to happen after this is that the market recuperates rather quickly. So if this takes three months, four months, five months, to, to turn around, what's gonna happen that sixth and seventh month is it's gonna spike up and all those people that were waiting to purchase are gonna come out. So we need you to understand that part of it too, right? And to be able to talk to people intelligently about this, talking to them about the interest rates, talking to them about possible opportunities and wealth building during this tough situation, those are important things too. And, and taking into consideration that your clients also have a lot of anxiety. It may not necessarily just be you. And explaining to them how the processes work in this current market to buyers and to sellers, that makes you the professional, right? That makes yeah. you stand out. By the way, I haven't seen it, but I can almost guarantee you 150% that Zillow is going to be sending out emails to their to people in their database about how to navigate the housing market through the coronavirus. So, cause Zillow knows what's up. Zillow knows that's gonna get eyeballs and that's gonna build trust. So don't be that agent that says it's business as usual. Create content around what's happening right now and, and get your clients to feel better. And get your clients to understand that, listen, like here's what we can do right now because I'll tell you what, Zillow's gonna do it so your clients are going to say, well, Zillow just told me that I shouldn't do an open house. Or if I do an open house, you know, how come you didn't tell me that? Don't pretend that this isn't going to be something that's going to be meaningful to homeowners and home buyers. Very, very true, man. Very true. I think I just thought of that. Dude. I just thought of that just now. I'm like, I'm like, you know, what? unbelievable. Good. Sometimes how, do you, I'm how do you do this, Nick? How do you do I'm this? Just, I'm just, I'm just amazed. At the brilliance, no, I'm kidding. But I did think of it because it's like, it, you know it's going to happen. Yeah, for sure, dude. I think for sure. what you're heading into also is that this, whatever we're heading into, recession or not, uh, a lot more effort is going to have to come from us to get to those same numbers that we had a few months back or a month ago. It's definitely hands down, more effort, and you've got to cope with that. And you've got to shift right now before two months from now when this is still going on or we don't know what the hell is going on. And you're like, dude, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on now. Well, dude, it's uncertain. So uh, just cope with the fact that you don't know what's going to happen. I think people have to come to grips with that too. Why couldn't you tell me what's going on? That's, that's for offline. I can't give away all my secrets. Uh, I want to see if there's any po points. Very good point. We need to, uh, Steve, uh, Laviega, La Laviega. Uh, Steve Delaviega is my buddy. What are oh, you Steve Delaviega. Oh my gosh. I know Steve. Sorry, <laughs> dude. Uh, we need to leave the discussion with common sense and facts and empathy. Dude. Thank you. I love that. We have incredible technology available. Uh, Julie Barr, incredible technology available via virtual tours yes i love yep. that linda landman the two of you together are solution finders well you know at least one of us yeah um thanks and, linda uh, i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> thank you linda um we do know uh let's see exactly we're not uh, karen oh karen jane was at hyperfast what's up karen uh, she was on our mastermind. I have her. If you are there as a resource for your clients and sphere in a time like this, they will look to you for service and advice Correct. when they need it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Perfect. 
perfect. That's a beautiful thing, man. So look, wrapping it up, we're here as real estate agents to help out the industry and to help them cope with what's happening because all we have is uncertainty out there. The more clarity we give to our consumers, the more they're going to be able to trust us. And it's the same for us here. We're trying to give you clarity to at least have some resources to come to, to understand how to go to that next step, right? Because I don't know when it's going to be that, that the whole nation has tests available for the coronavirus where we can use at any time. I don't know when they're going to come out with a vaccine. End of the year, maybe? No, oh, well, they uh, say quarter, it could be a year. Next year? I don't know. So for now? I can tell I can. Sorry, go ahead. I think you drank too much wine. Oh, no. I'm just hey, messing with you. I, listen, <laughs> I'm self-quarantined. <laughs> um, I, what I was going to say was uh, that personally, this is how I feel. It's, it's eventually, I personally feel it's going to be like the flu in the sense that it will come back every year. It will come back. It will always be around. Um, so there, uh, there will be a vaccine, I think, but they're, they're saying it's going to be over a year. But right now, listen, here's the thing. It's a new illness. We haven't had a new, we have, obviously we have a new illness like every decade, it seems right. Mm -hmm. But, uh, whenever that happens, yeah, it's scary, man. It's scary because they don't know, they don't know what it is. So just yeah. be, just be sensitive to that. That's really the main message I want to tell people. Be sensitive to that. Don't make other people feel like they're stupid or that you think it's a conspiracy or it's political. Stop it. Just stop yeah. because you need to be emotionally connected to someone with this right now. Yeah. And if you, and if you find yourself being very anxious and feeling like you're getting really, really sad and, and spiraling into some type of a, a depression light or not, uh, just always always know that you can reach out to any one of both of us, right? Or you can reach out to us on Lab Code Agents or through Facebook. We're here to help you out. Uh, you're not going to bring us down. We, we have a lot of people surrounding us that keep us up and uh, we guard, we guard who we talk to and who we let in. And if you For need sure. help, we're here to help you. So that's what this whole community is about. Oh man. So good, dude. Well, do this so one. good. Thanks for doing this. We're going to do this more often this week. We've got, for those of you who check your emails today, it might've already gone out, but we have uh, street text helping us out with online lead generation on Monday, Tuesday, we have KCM keeping current matters. We have them on and we're going to be talking about the coronavirus as well. And then well, Friday we have one of your friends, Nick, I forgot her name. Is it Kimberly? Oh, Kimberly, yeah, Kimberly Masur, Mrs. Sir, I can't, can't pronounce her last name always. I always forget. I always That's forget exciting to me. What are we but talking here's about? The thing. So I want to talk about that real quick. So with, uh, with, the, with keeping current, we're going to have keeping current matters on Tuesday. on Tuesday. And that's really important for you guys, because if you don't know what keep, keepingcurrentmatters.com is, they're a company that curates um, content for you as an agent. And so they have a lot of data points from lots of different areas. And they're going to be churning out a lot of content about the coronavirus in terms of the housing market. So you're going to want to tune in for that. That's on Tuesday at 2 o'clock uh, Eastern. And if you are signed up for our mailing list, go and register because that's going to be a really amazing segment. Um, and then on Friday, Kimberly uh, Meserve, uh, who is in Boston, uh, we're going to talk to her about how she did $11 million in volume in a new market through buyer, uh, buyer seminars. But... She is already having to shift the way she does buyer seminars, right? So yes. she has a buyer seminar coming up um, in a, next month, and the bar that she's holding it at actually canceled it on her. So she's bringing it onto Zoom now, and she has like 40 or 50 people who are registered to come. So even she is now having to shift the way she's doing business. So that's something to tune into to also. So yeah. I love that, guys. Well, thank you for tuning in. Thanks, Nick. It was awesome. I appreciate it. Good seeing you, bro. It's uh, good connecting with you. I love you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, I just ran out. Perfect timing. All right, good. Bye. Bye-bye.